Welcome students, thanks for joining me for another video. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the literacy test for grade four for June, 2022. Okay, so again, the questions, there are 30 questions and you have 40 minutes to answer 30 questions. All right, so let's look at, this is actually the, picture that's related to the questions you will answer. So this says the information below is from a library card. Read it carefully then answer questions one to four. So it tells us um, Newport Library Service, the borrower's card, it gives us the card number, the name of the book, the author's name, the publisher's name, the type of book, the book identification number, the status, okay, the borrower's name, the borrower's phone number, the date, the expiry date, and ch checked, who checked it. All right, so question one. Let me make it bigger. All right, so question one says, what is a library card number? Okay, so let's go back to the card. What's the library card number? All right, so let's look at the information. And here we have, and I, again, you would have to, you'd be able to look at this in your own time. This is the library card number. So let's go for that in our answer, 00, 000, 000 256. All right, the answer is C. Now it says, who wrote The Sleepy Pirates? Okay, so we're gonna go back to look at the author person who wrote the book and the author's name is Glenville Stevens that's the author's name the person who wrote the book that's the author all right Glenville Stevens so the answer is a again all the information is there so just to read all right what does status mean is it the location of the book the age of the book, the type of book, or the expiry date of the book. Okay. So status, we see status here. And it says on the shelf or on loan. So pretty much where the book is. Is it on the shelf or is it out? Is it out on loan? All right. So I would say it's the location, not the age, not the type. And of course, not the expiry date, but where the where's the book on the shelf or out? It says who borrowed the sleepy pirates. So let's go back to see the borrower's name. And so the borrower's name is Steve Carlisle. Okay, so Steve borrowed the book. I hope Steve brings back the book when he's finished. So it's Steve. That's the borrower's name. Okay, that takes care of questions one to four. Then it says, read the passage carefully, then answer questions five to nine. My older sister, Nikki, and I like to sit in the shade of our big mango tree and tell stories. Sometimes that sits with us girls. We like that. He has a wealth of stories. Some of his stories are great. We laugh when we hear them. Mom thinks they are funny too. Some are serious, and of course, others are strange and make us feel just a bit afraid. I like those he tells about animals the most, okay? The source, smart speller, and integrated approach. All right, so it says, who is telling the story? Is it mom, dad, Nikki, or Nikki's sister? All right, so it's not mom. It's not dad. It's not Nikki, right? It's Nikki's sister, because of course the person who's telling the story tells us of Nikki's name says my older sister Nikki, so it's not Nikki, and then she said sometimes dad, so it's not dad either, and then she says mom thinks they are funny too, so Nikki's sister is the one telling the story. We didn't get her name, right? Nikki's sister. We'll call her Nikki's sister. No. What kind of story is the narrator's favorite? Is it animal stories, strange stories, funny stories, or serious stories? 
and the narrator says, I like those he tells about animals the most. All right, so he likes the ones about animals the most. So what kind of story is the narrator's favorite? Animal stories. That's what she likes the most. Now it says, how many persons are in the family? How many people in the family? Right? So we know that the person telling the story obviously is in the family. And Nikki, that's her sister, dad, and mom. Didn't tell us about anybody else. So person telling the story, Nikki, dad, and mom. Okay, so that would be four people. The answer is C, four. Question eight, what does wealth of story mean? Okay, let's just go back, although it might not necessarily give us the answer there, but it says he has a wealth of stories, okay? Some of his stories are great, some are funny, some are serious. Um, a wealth of story, let's look at the options that they give us though. Is it story about money? A lot of stories, short stories, long stories. A wealth of stories means a lot, okay? A lot of stories. So the answer is B. The family is usually blank when the stories are being told. Where would the family usually be when they're telling the stories? All right, so we go back. It says, my older sister and I like to sit in the shade of our big mango tree. All right. And it says, sometimes that sits with us. So that's where they like to sit, the shade of the big mango tree. So the family is usually under the mango tree when the stories are being told. Question 10. says, look at the table carefully, then answer questions 10 to 14. Items sold by four vendors in Falmouth Market. All right, so this is Falmouth Market. You have Miss Percy, Mr. Roy, Auntie Mavis, and Trevor. Okay, so Miss Percy sells broccoli, grapefruit, local carrot, coconut. Mr. Roy sells coconut, sweet potato, tomato, pineapple. Auntie Mavis, papaya, guava, coconut yellow yam and Trevor sells coconut cantaloupe um, melon and imported carrot okay so it says which vendor sells cantaloupe and that would be so when we look at Miss Percy there's no cantaloupe in our section Roy doesn't have any either uh, maybe it's none so the person with cantaloupe would be Trevor so the answer is C Trevor has cantaloupe. That's one of my favorite fruits, by the way. All right, so question 11 says, which item is sold by all four vendors? So we're gonna look back to see which item we see in the four each column. So what's common to you know all the vendors? And it's coconut. Coconut is here. Mr. Roy sells coconut too. Uh, Miss Mavis sells coconut. And Trevor sells coconut. So all four vendors sell coconut. So the answer is B, coconut. And it says, how many vendors sell papaya? So let's go look to see who is selling papaya now. Who do we get our papaya from? All right, Miss Percy says, these items, no papaya here, Mr. Roy, no papaya here. Auntie Mavis has papaya and Trevor doesn't. So it's Auntie Mavis that sells papaya. So just one, only one vendor, that's D. All right, now question 13 says, if someone wants to buy imported carrot, which vendor should he or she go to? Imported carrot. So let's see who is selling 
imported carrot. All right, so per Miss Percy has local carrot. Mr. Rye don't sell no carrot at all. Auntie Mavis don't sell no carrot. Trevor sells imported. So are we looking for local or imported? Okay, so who sells imported? And that's Trevor. He has imported carrots. All right, which statement is true? Broccoli is sold by Aunt Mavis. Local carrot can be bought from Trevor. Pineapple is sold by Mr. Roy. Yellow yam can be bought from Miss Percy. All right, let's see which of those. Is it that broccoli? Let's look at the broccoli first. Does Aunt Auntie Mavis sell broccoli? All right, Auntie Mavis, papaya, guava, coconut, yellow yam, no broccoli. Um, local carrots can be brought from Trevor. Does Trevor have local carrot? Let's look at what Trevor sells. Trevor sells imported, so that's not, also not true. Doesn't have local carrots. Pineapple is sold by Mr. Roy. Let's go look at Mr. Roy. And he does, he has pineapples, but let's still look at the other option too. Yellow yam can be brought from Miss Percy. Does Miss Percy have yellow yam? No yam. So the answer is Mr. Roy sells pineapple. All right. So the answer would be C. All right. That is the only true statement here. And then, oh, another passage. All right. So now we're going to read the following passage and you answer items 15 to 19. Okay. If you want to keep a pet, you you should think carefully about how you will need to look after it. Animals have feelings just like we do, and it is cruel to keep a pet if you don't have the time or money to take care of it. A dog, for instance, needs lots of food, which can cost a lot of money each week. Also, you must take it for a walk at least once a day. A cat eats less food and can take itself out, but you must still feed it twice a day and look after it. Animals in cages, like rabbits, guinea pigs, mice, birds, need to have their cages cleaned regularly. So think carefully before you buy a pet. All right, the source, Bond Assessment Papers, 89 Years, J.M. Bond, and Sarah Lindsay. All right, so... Which animal is not mentioned in the article? This is question 15. Which animal is not mentioned in the article? All right, so we see birds, right? When the animals in cages. And of course, they spoke about a cat and dog. The only thing not mentioned in the article was fish. So that's the animal not mentioned in the article. There was no fish. Question 16. What advice is the writer giving? Go ahead and buy a pet. Think before buying a pet. Keep pets in a cage. Children should have pets. All right. So what is the author trying to, what is the writer? What advice? All right. So in the final um, paragraph, it says, so think carefully before you buy a pet. And in the beginning, it also says, if you want to keep a pet, you should think carefully. So... It's talking about thinking before buying a pet. So the answer is B. All right. Think about it first. That's the advice he's giving. All right. What is meant by the term take itself out? All right. Go walk by itself, clean itself, get out of the cage, feed itself. What does it mean by take itself out? All right. So it says that a dog, right? Um you must take it for a walk. So you have to take the dog out on a walk, all right? So the cat eats less food and can take itself out, okay? So pretty much the cat does the walking about. It doesn't, as a matter of fact, the dog does it even, the cat is usually free in terms of not having a leash or anything. So the cat can take itself out, okay? So what is meant 
um, by take itself out, it means to go walk by itself, okay? Go walk by itself. Okay. All right, so then we get to question 18. Why is the writer giving a warning about buying a pet? Okay, is it that they can be harmful, they are good to keep, they must be kept in houses, or they need a lot of care? All right, so it's because they need a lot of care. It spoke about the dog and what you have to do. It costs money, you have to take it for a walk at least once a day. And with the cat, you have to feed it twice a day. And with animals in cages, you have to keep their cages clean. You have to clean the cages regularly. So um, they require a lot of care. So you have to be up for that. And so the answer is D. All right. Which pet can be expensive to take care of? Is it the birds, the rabbits, the dogs, and the cats? They did talk about the dogs, right? Needing lots of food, which can cost a lot of money each week. So a dog, I don't see them mention anything else about when it comes about money with the other animals. So the dog, it says, you know, it needs a lot of food, which can cost a lot of money. So the answer for 19, which pets can be expensive, the dog. Okay, dogs are very expensive. All right, so then it says, use the information in the table below to answer questions 20 to 24, all right? Sales of four types of household appliances at Miller & Sons Company Limited from the year 2000 to 2002. All right, so Miller & Sons Company Limited, this is their sales report. So in 2000, they sold 25 television, 25 radios, 56 irons, electric irons. Um, 10 stove in 2001, they sold 55 televisions, 25 radio, 30 electric iron, and 9 stoves. In 2002, they sold 80 televisions, 25 radios, 31 electric irons, and 11 stoves. Okay, and it gives the total pretty much for all the televisions sold, all the radios, all the Right, and for each year, again, they have some totals. So question 20 says, which appliance had the highest sale over three years? So over the three years, 2000, 2001, 2002, which appliance are the highest sales? And that is, of course, the television, right? It's a total over the three years of 160, right? That's higher than any of the others. So it would have been the television, D. Question 21. What is the total of all the appliances sold at the end of the three years? All of the appliances, TV, the stove, the, the radio, and the iron, all of them at the end of the entire period of three years. All right, where do we find that information? All right, so this was for all the TVs sold, right? It was 160. And then this total would have been for all the radios sold. This one would have been for all the irons over the three-year period and all the stoves. So the total there, and we could have done it the other way, right? But if we add all these totals, right, for all three years, then we end up with... 3,082. Of course, we could have looked at it the other way. All of the items sold in the first year, then the second year, then the third year still would give us a total of 382. Either way you look at it, we get the answer. Um, so the answer is 382. All right. And then 22, which appliance had sales that remain the same for each year? So every year they had the same um, number of sales, that would be the radio, 25, 25, 25. The same consistent amount every year. So that would be the radio. 
Whatever it is, are still being sold. Okay, so question 23. How many electric irons were sold in 2002? We're going to look at irons at the year 2002. How many electric irons were sold in 2002? And that would be this number right here. See, 2002 electric irons, the number is 31. So that would be C. All right, question 24. Which appliance had the lowest sale in 2001? Which appliance had the lowest, okay? These amounts sold in 2001. All right, so we have 55, this is 2001, and then we have 25, 30. So stole, right? Only had nine sales. So the stole, we only sold nine stoves. All right, so the answer would have been B, that had the lowest sale in 2001. All right, so here we are at the final section of the paper. It says, read the letter and answer questions 25 to 30. This is our final activity. <clears throat> Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Like this video and share with a friend. Okay, so the address is there. <clears throat> Greenside, Greenside PO, Hannibal. The date, October 7, 2021. Dear Jean, I am happy to hear from you. I felt very uneasy on my first year school among a thousand new faces. However, I have begun to like it. I have not joined the dance and picture clubs. Are you keeping up with their netball? I miss having you on my netball team. My new friend is Celia, a girl from Montego Bay. She's about your age. Don't be jealous. I'm still your friend. When we meet for Christmas holidays, we will visit the beaches in Ocho Rios and Fairy Hill. Love, Marva. All right, so what are the questions? It says, who wrote the letter? Is it Celia, Jean, Marva, or Love? All right, so the person who wrote the letter would be Marva. Okay, Marva is writing, so... In the closing, you see where her name is there. So it's Marva. All right. So which statement is true? Celia is Jean's friend. Marva is a teacher. Jean is in the dance club. Marva lives in Greenside. So is Celia Jean's friend? Let's look at that one first. All right. So she's writing to Jean, telling her about C. So Marva is writing to Jean, telling her about Celia. So Jean and Celia are not friends. They don't know each other. Marva is a teacher. No, of course, Marva is not a teacher because she's at school, a student. So she's not a teacher. Jean is in the dance club. Is it Jean in the dance club? No. Marva is telling Jean that um, she's in the dance club. So um, for Jean, it's netball. Or she likes to usually play netball. All right, so... Marva lives in Greenside. So remember, Marva was the person writing the letter. The address is at the top. Greenside. So that is true. Marva lives in Greenside. That statement is true. All right. So which word could be used instead of uneasy in line one? All right. Let's go back to the passage. I felt very uneasy on my first day at school among a thousand new faces. All right. So will it be uncomfortable, lucky, happy? Excited, the answer is A, uncomfortable. Again, guys, you would have had the passage in front of you to be able to read it at your own leisure and understand, but in the interest of time, and you can always pause the video, read the information for yourself, but just to get it going, you know, I'm going ahead. All right, so question 28, where is Marva's new friend from? All right, Montego Bay, Greenside, Ocho Rios, or Fairy Hill. Let's go back. It says, my new friend is Celia, a girl from Montego Bay. Okay, so Celia is from Montego Bay. Question, sorry, option A. And question 29. How did Marva feel about hearing from Jean? Curious, disappointed, glad, or strange? How did Marva feel 
about hearing from Jean. Let's go to where she heard from Jean. It says, Dear Jean, I am happy, 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 happy to hear from you. So she's happy, which word there means the same as happy, all right? So how did Barbara feel about hearing from Jean? She was curious, disappointed, glad, or strange. She was glad, okay? That's another word for happy. And the final question, why did Marva say don't be jealous? Is it that she didn't want Jean to think that she had replaced her with a new friend? That Jean was not a good person? That uh, Sorry, that she didn't want Jean to think that she was not a good person, that she had forgotten her, that she was only her friend when they played netball, okay? So why did Marva say don't be jealous? Let's go back to the passage. It says, My new friend is Celia, a girl from Montego Bay. She is about your age. Don't be jealous. I'm still your friend. Okay. So, what would be the answer there? Why did Marva say don't be jealous? All right. Because she didn't want Jean to think that she had replaced her with a new friend. She had not been replaced. Okay. So it says, don't be jealous. She was not replaced. All right, so there you have it, students. 30 questions. For those who will be sitting their exam soon, all the best. And those who will be using this for practice whenever you get the chance to see this video, then all the best to you too. Again, guys, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.